All right, so we did have ourselves a few extra Vancouver Connects news and notes that made their way over onto our timelines. We didn't cover this earlier because I wanted to give the last video a little bit of time to marinate, but let's go over the latest in terms of Vancouver Canucks roster moves. We'll talk about certain guys that are on the team and that will be given more responsibility over the upcoming days, and we'll also talk about contract extensions and prospects because there were a few interesting notes on that front. Starting out with the notice we had received at 10.55 a.m. earlier this morning, GM Patrick Alvine announced today that forward Dakota Joshua has been placed on the LTIR retroactively, and goaltender Artur Silovs has been recalled from Abbotsford under emergency conditions. So, firstly, Dakota Joshua, LTIR, that sucks. But as Tommy goes out there and replies in the first one, don't worry guys, the Garland, Lindy, and Bluger line looks good for now. Dakota Joshua will be back in time for game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And then the replies say no, it's um, Pud Colson. So yeah, the line's looking pretty all right. I think Pud Colson fits very well with this core and the middle six role that he was given. But seeing Dakota Joshua placed on the LTIR. Not ideal, but of course we recognize it would be a lot better to have Joshua recover fully and properly before rushing him back into any game action. I think over the past few years, the Vancouver Canucks have fallen victim to rushing guys back, and it's really screwed them over in certain situations here. Arthur Silovs also has been recalled from Abbey, so he will be, at least for now, the backup goaltender for the Vancouver Canucks. And if you wanted to talk about goaltending, this is what Jay Pat went out there and said. Rick Tockett says that Casey DeSmith will get the next two games for sure, and then they'll start to see where he and the team are. He wouldn't commit to getting Silovs a start on this call-up. Now that, of course, is intriguing because as we had talked about in one of the earlier videos after the Thatcher Demko injury went down, if you take a look at the Canucks and their schedule, the next two games against the Colorado Avalanche are going to be tomorrow and then on Saturday. So, of course, tomorrow is Wednesday. Colorado's a pretty nasty team. That's going to be a pretty big challenge for Casey DeSmith. But Saturday is the next Canucks game, so DeSmith will have quite a while to go with rest and development. So when it comes to this, I mean, you talk about the next five games the Canucks have. This is roughly the range that we will reportedly see Casey DeSmith and whomever it is, Arthur Silovs or Tolopilo or whomever, go out there and get some extra starts because two weeks later, Monday, March 25th against the Kings, this is projected to being the time that Thatcher Demko might return. This game right here could see itself as a potential first game back for Demko if everything works out well. We did say in the other video that the projected timeline for Demko is two to four weeks, and this LA game right here is two weeks. So that seems to be the minimum entry level period for Demko to return. We'll just have to wait and see. The best part is though, with these games here against the Avalanche to Caps, Sabres, Canadians, and Flames, it's only really the Avalanche that seem to be a super good team, and there happens to be a really big break in between these games. So, hey, right now, it's March 12th, the Canucks will play their third game a week from now. So, Avalanche tomorrow, Capitals on Saturday, and then another multi-day break before Buffalo one week from today. So, there might be some good opportunities for Casey DeSmith to string together a whole bunch of games in a row. We had talked about it yesterday that he had started eight in a row last year, so he's definitely not incapable of that. It's just we'll see if he's able to bring that over to Vancouver, but smart move on Rick Tockett, not committing to getting any of the other guys a start here, because if Casey DeSmith is all right against Colorado and then against Washington, there's no reason for him to not start against Buffalo a week from now, and then potentially against Montreal. So, this should be pretty interesting to pay attention to. It's just a note that I think deserves to be talked about. Now, as it comes to other guys, though, we did have ourselves Tyler Myers get back on to practice today. I know a lot of Canucks fans were kind of freaking out about this because it's like, hey, the team has been playing so good with Carson Soucy back and Tyler Myers out. So do we really want to see Myers return? We'll see whether or not he does make a return to the lineup tomorrow, but he did have an interview going out there and saying that he felt good about it. We don't know necessarily if he's entering the lineup, but we will see by the time tomorrow begins. 
Now, when it comes to some of the other Canucks things, this was a pretty big deal as well. You had yourself some Swedish hockey going on across the pond that was pretty noteworthy. Arebro ended up defeating Linkopang 3-2 in the shootout, and you also had yourselves Moto in the SHL losing their game, which allowed Arebro to go out there and make the SHL playoffs. They barely squeaked in the postseason during the last day. So, for Jonathan Lakaramaki, Vancouver Canucks prospect, this will be a good opportunity for him to showcase his chops in a postseason environment. Lakaramaki this season ended off his SHL campaign with 31 points in 46 games, which is a very, very good point production metric. 19 goals in 46 games, too, makes it all the more impressive. But, of course, when it comes to the Canucks, we will wait and see for Le Karamaki to wrap up either his postseason and then maybe suit up for Team Sweden at the World Championships, and then maybe we'll see him suit up for Vancouver or for Abbotsford or wherever it is. I don't think he's ready particularly to be a full-time NHL player just yet, especially considering the circumstances like the Vancouver Canucks right now are in a playoff hunt, they're doing their thing, they want to capitalize on the now. This doesn't really seem like the appropriate time to bring in a guy who pretty much needs more development before becoming a full-time player into the NHL, but we'll see what happens. Just give it a while. For now, though, we have to take a look at Le Karamaki and the Oribro playoff run. But of course, with all of this stuff going down, the... Dakota Joshua LTAR situation, the Archer Seelobs call up, Tyler Myers returning back to practice, Casey DeSmith getting more games, Leonathan Lakaramaki doing his part in the SHL. We had ourselves one more piece of news for Vancouver hockey that was a pretty big one, and it happens to involve some extensions handed out to some of the people we don't necessarily see all the time. The Vancouver Canucks have announced today that Ryan Johnson has been extended and promoted to assistant GM, and assistant GMs Cam Granado and Emily Castonguay have also received extensions too. Strength in numbers, the Vancouver Canucks social media team goes out there and proclaims Castonge Granado extended, Ryan Johnson extended and promoted as to the assistant GM. This is a pretty good piece of news because when you talk about this trio of Vancouver Canucks executives, Ryan Johnson has mostly been the AHL guy, like the GM of the Abbotsford Canucks, and his role as an assistant GM of the Vancouver Canucks will pretty much just give him a pay raise and also allow him to retain his role as GM in Abbey. So all the good development we have been seeing out of the Abbey Canucks, Ryan Johnson happens to be a big part of that. He has been an invaluable resource for me in the entire front office, said Patrick Alvine. Not only has he done an excellent job in running our American Hockey League affiliate in Abbotsford, but he has also done a lot of great work on the hockey operation side. His player assessment and insightful advice has been a key driver for our improvement at both the NHL and AHL level. I'm so grateful for this opportunity, and I can't thank the Canucks enough for providing me with the chance to learn and grow, said Johnson. Working alongside of Patrick and Jim has been an incredible experience, and I have learned a lot from both of them. Helping this organization improve is my number one priority, and I'm confident we'll continue to take positive steps forward because of the incredible people that work in both Abbotsford and Vancouver. Now, we also had ourselves write-ups for Castonge and Granado. We'll go out there and read these here. Solidifying our hockey operations team was a key priority for me when I signed my extension, said Alvin. Cami and Emily fit in nicely with the group, and I look forward to working with them and continuing our partnership moving forward. Having a strong, intelligent, and diverse leadership team sets us up nicely for future success. Granado joined the Canucks previously from the Seattle Kraken, where she was the first female scout in NHL history. She also was a very, very good hockey player in her own right. Emily Castonguay became the first female assistant GM in team history on January 24th, 2022, joining the Canucks for Momentum Hockey, where she became the first female NHLPA certified agent in Canada in 2016. Castonguay also was a pretty good hockey player in the NCAA, and she's particularly known from Canucks fans as the person who deals with all the money. She does the contract work. She is partly the reason the Vancouver Canucks were able to sign some of these players to pretty good deals, I would say. Coming from the perspective of being an agent herself, she happened to have been the agent that straight up fleeced Jim Benning into giving Antoine Roussel that crazy contract all those years ago. So seeing the Canucks sticking to a group of executives that has worked, this is great. Seeing all three of these individuals getting more time with the organization, pretty good decision in my opinion. And then of course, having all the extra updates with Le Karamaki, DeSmith, 
Joshua, Myers, Arthur C. Loves. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks today. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about everything we had discussed for the Vancouver Canucks on this day, Tuesday, March 12th, one day before the Colorado Avalanche game on Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charles 99 and bye.